So I'd like to tell you a little bit about our clinical practice guidelines for dementia. Why do them? Quite simply, there weren't any. And as we all know, dementia is very common. One in three people at 85 have dementia. It's now the commonest cause of death for women and the second commonest cause of death for men. And we know that if you have clinical practice guidelines, they give consistency to practice. Um, and that's what we really need to do in the area of dementia. Um, for many years, we have known what we should have been doing, but not always doing it. And these guidelines help with that. We know that dementia is managed inconsistently across Australia. And again, guidelines help um, by outlining what we should be doing. What's really important with these guidelines is that consumers have been very, very involved in their development and in their dissemination. Because they've been authorised and approved by the NHMRC, they are gold standard. So these are our standard, at least for the next couple of years, in dementia management. And the final thing is, if you actually have guidelines, it gives a condition clinical legitimacy. Um, we have them for stroke, for arthritis. We need them also for dementia. So how did we do these guidelines? We didn't try and reinvent the wheel. We took existing international guidelines, in this case, the NICE guidelines from the UK, and we used a very rigorous review process to adapt them to Australian conditions. And we included areas put forward by our consumers as being of great importance to them. We, put for, we formed a, a consultative guidelines committee, 23 people from right across the dementia field. So researchers, clinicians, consumers, people from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander background and people from called background. We feel we had a really good collection of people working on this. We worked on the guidelines on a number of different face-to-face -face and also teleconference consultations. And then we put our guidelines out for 45 days for public consultation and got about 70 submissions. We did make some modifications as a result of those consultations. So the types of recommendations, there are evidence-based recommendations. And for these, we did a mini systematic review for each of the recommendations. So they are very strongly based in, in science and research, and certainly you will see that in the guidelines. Then we have consensus-based recommendations, which are formulated when there's not adequate evidence, but done on the basis of experience and other research that's been done. And then finally, we have practice points. And these, again, are areas where there is no research at the moment, but expert guidance is used. We also have the principles of dignity and care. There are 10 of these and they underpin the practice of the, uh, the guidelines. What's in the guidelines? It covers everything in dementia from diagnosis and management right through to palliative and end of life care with quite a good section on um, treatment because there is evidence in that area. Finally, we launched the guidelines in March 2016 and we've been busy disseminating them ever since. The web page for the guidelines is there, it's easily available. I'd really encourage you to go to our website, our Cognitive Decline Partnership Centre website, because there is a huge range of resources freely available to download there.